Hello, in this video we're going to learn how to create a really really simple frame animation using a character and learning how to use what's called the puppet warp tool to add a little bit of movement. Um, to begin, let's go file, new. We're going to look for the preset up above that says film and video. Then we're going to click on the HGTV 1080p option and click create. Now we want your screen to show the timeline down below and also to show the layers off to the side. So to make that happen go to window and make sure you have layers checked and you have timeline checked. And that will show the timeline option down below and the layers off to the right. When we look at the timeline below we can choose between create video timeline or create frame animation. We're going to create a frame animation for this and to do that we're just going to click on this button and that's going to show our timeline with one frame down below. We are going to create five frames. You can go ahead and just click on the plus symbol which is going to give you five frames to start with. Now let's go over to our background layer and the first thing we're going to look for on our background layer is we're going to double click on or single click on that padlock and then we're going to go ahead and lock that layer with the padlock again. Now we want to create a new layer above that. This new layer above that we're going to call this the original Uh, character design. All right, and then this is where I want you to use the brush tool and simply draw a character. Um, <coughs> excuse me, talking about the brush real quick, uh, let's look at the brush. The color of the brush is going to be whatever this square at the bottom of your toolbar is top square represents the foreground color and then the back square represents the background color. We want to double click on that and choose a color from your color picker. You've got all the spectrums of the rainbow up here. I'm just going to choose a blue. Click OK and now that becomes your color that you're going to draw with. Looking up in the top left corner you've got your brush size and hardness and all these different brush brushes for you to choose from. Okay, We're just going to set the hardness to 100% for the moment and I'm going to use a smaller brush, something probably around 10, 10 pixels works, works just great for this. Um, keep your character design really really simple for this. All right, so I'm just going to draw some eyes, draw a little mouth, so on and so forth. And for this, I've already created, to speed things up, I've already created a really simple character right here. All right, so we fast forwarded. Here I've got my really, really simple kind of octopus-like character created. I just used the brush tool and a few different colors. And then what I also did is I created a background color. Um, I created the background color by using the paint bucket tool. Just chose a color, kind of a nice blue. Made sure that that was selected and then I clicked the paint bucket tool to dump that color on that whole layer. Um, I prefer this color so I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to go ahead and lock that. Alright, now the next thing is we want to take this original character um, layer. So I'm going to write original character because I don't want to mess with that layer at all. What I want to do is I want to duplicate it. So I'm going to duplicate it five times. To duplicate it you can click and drag onto the plus and that will copy that layer. I can right click on that and click duplicate layer. That works. I can also go up here, duplicate layer there, or I can go to the very top of the menu and duplicate layer there. Lots of different ways to duplicate your layer. I prefer the click and drag method. Super easy. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to my original character. I'm going to lock that and I'm going to make that 
disappear because I don't want to mess with that at all. I'm going to click on each one of these. I'm just going to name them one, two, three, four, and five. I'm going to do five changes. You can do more than this. You can do um, you know, as many as you want. Now comes the fun part. So the way I'm going to have these showing is number one, I'm going to show on frame number one. Frame number two, I'm going to show number two. Frame number three, I'm going to show layer number three. Frame number four, I'm going to show number frame number four. Frame number five, I'm going to show layer number five in that background there. Okay. So right now there's no changes. Let's go ahead and start changing. Well, frame number one and layer number one, I'm not going to mess with that. So I'm going to go ahead to my frame number two. Select layer number two, and I'm going to go up to this thing called Edit, and then scroll down to Puppet Warp. When you click on the Puppet Warp tool, it will now allow you to show a mesh or turn off the mesh. It's kind of like a spider web over it. And it's personal preference how you want that. I'm just going to do the first first change with, with it showing. And when you hover over your, your layer drawing, it's going to show you a push pin. Now the push pin I can click and set a few push pins. And when I set a push pin down, it allows me to click and drag that push pin to make a movement. So it kind of works like a puppet where you're grabbing some things and moving other parts of it. So the tip is, if you don't want parts of it to move, pin it down. And then if you do want parts to move, click and drag it. And then click the check mark up above. So now when I check my transition, it goes from frame one to frame two. Now let's go to frame three and go to my layer three. And I'm going to go edit, puppet warp again. And this time I'm going to do it without the mesh. So you can kind of see what's going on a little bit easier. And I'm just trying to keep kind of the central part of my character still, and then these little tentacle legs, I'm just letting them move in all different directions. And another tip is, if you would like to see what your previous frame was, just turn on, I'll do the check mark, um, turn on that layer below it, and you can see, it's kind of like onion skinning, what was there before. So one, two, three, let's quickly do four. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer, so it didn't allow me to do that. Go edit, pop a warp. There we go. All right, so now I can play through and it, you know, moves pretty frantically, which is kind of cool. Um, to make this a little bit longer and kind of smooth out the transitions, the final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these frames by holding down Shift, selecting one, and selecting the, the last one. And that highlights all of them. Now I'm going to go over to my timeline options right up here, those little bars on top of each other. I'm going to say copy frames. I'm going to click on it again. Click paste frames. It's going to ask where do I want to paste them. I want to paste after the selection. Okay, it added those here. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to reverse those frames, reverse the order. And that's going to help create a little bit of a smoother transition. So go reverse frames. There we go. And now watch as I play it through. 
has kind of a little bit of a different rhythm to the animation. I can slow these down, I can change the change how long each one of these frames shows by doing the drop down menu. If I want to slow or speed some things up, but I'm okay with the way it is right now. Um, and to save it, I'm going to go File, Save As, to save it as a Photoshop document first. Okay, I would go to my Creative Cloud, Character Animation 1, and then add my last name. And then I also want to export it as a, a video file. So I'm going to go to File, Export, Render Video, select where it's going, Creative Cloud File folder, uh, the name, character animation 1, Hecknarf, and now it adds the .mp4. I'm going to click Render, and that's where it will live. Um, so once again, how to get this started, make sure your timeline's showing, make sure your layers are showing, uh, make sure you keep one, one layer that has your original character design on, and uh, lock that and turn it off. Make it invisible so that way you can always refer back to it in case you get stuck in a pickle and you kind of edited and moved your character a little, little too much. Um, thanks for watching. Hope this helps you create a very simple kind of character and a simple character animation. Take care.